Hey guys, Lemonade here, and today we're going to show you through the new web app that we made for the Zenblade 65 keyboard. So I'm going to show you where to find it, go through how to customize your keyboard, and all that fun stuff. So you're going to be on Ponish.com, and at the way bottom of the page here, you'll be able to find our software driver downloads. Once here, it's right front and center, the first one, the Ponage Web Hub version 1. You can just click on this and it will bring you to the link to access the web app. Now, of course, you can just bookmark this so it's ponage.com forward slash pages forward slash drivers dash hub. Now, now that we're here, it's going to prompt you to connect to device. Click that. Your Zenblade 65 will be recognized and you will just hit connect. And now we're in. The first tab we have here is the lighting tab. So, of course, this is pretty self explanatory. You'll be able to set all your lighting preferences for your RGB. So all the effects here, like static, magnetic, whatever you want, and the brightness of the actual LEDs themselves, maximum being on this end, and then the actual color choice. And you can even save uh, your favorite colors here. And the last part is the actual speed of the effect that you choose. So slow, medium, fast, and very fast. And next up is going to be the actuations tab. This is where you're going to be able to set your individual actuation points for your keys and also your rapid trigger settings. Now in our web app, we call it press threshold and release threshold. So press threshold would be your actuation point and the release threshold would be your rapid trigger sensitivity. It's all labeled here. So we can go down to point one or as high as four millimeters for your press threshold and your release threshold can go down again to 0.1 and all the way up to four millimeters depending on your preference. On the left hand side over here you can see your presets tab. This is where you'll be able to create new actuation points and set these to various keys. If you right click on here you can duplicate, you can change the color of the preset, um, you can reset this to its default settings or delete it completely. Now you have three buttons here once you have your presets all created, you can free assign. So that just means that I can just click on any key here and assign it this particular color that I'm on. So this teal color, or I can click and drag. So I'm painting all these keys as I'm dragging around. That's going to be your free assign. Now the next button here is going to be reassign another preset. So if we activate that, this just allows you to quickly swap an entire preset to a different one. So it just uh, saves you a few extra clicks. So let's say I want to turn all these teal presets to the black one, which I have set for 1.4 millimeters. I can just click on the black, click back here, and they will all turn back and there will be no more teal. And the last button here is assigned to all, pretty self-explanatory. If we wanted to make all of the keys just one default preset, boom, and it changes them all for you. Now, something I wanted to add before we continue to the last few sections, this web app is in a beta stage. So your core functionality will work and we wanted to get this out so Zenblade owners can get their settings dialed in. But of course, there's going to be things that we're working on the back end that we'll be able to talk to you about at a future date. So Again, updates are coming, but if you guys see any bugs or issues or just features that you want added, please let us know in our feedback section on our Discord. Now that I have everything set back to my default settings on how I prefer them, let me just touch on these two settings real quick. So press threshold, again, this is going to be your actuation point. Now for people who aren't aware, your actuation point is essentially um, how far down that the key will have to press before it actually registers a key press. So the lower this value is, the sooner that your key will register that it's being activated. So as you can see over here, you get some sort of visual representation. So if I'm at 0.1, that's the lowest possible setting. I'm to just barely tap the key and it can activate. Now, conversely, if I set this all the way to four millimeters, that's uh, the deepest. I really have to push the key all the way down. And you can see here, uh, it's going to take just a little bit longer for that key press to actually activate here. So um, again, this is just a setting where, for example, for me, certain keys like escape, tab, caps, windows key, 
and some of my media keys here, I don't want them accidentally activated, so I set them a little bit higher. Now for the keys that I have in blue, this is my kind of fastest preset, so I have it at 0.6. That feels the best for me for my main movement keys here, Shift, C, WSD, and my ability keys. Now some kind of core abilities, um, like you would find in Overwatch or Finals, like Q and E, um, I prefer just to have those on a little bit slower so I don't accidentally hit them. Again, it's all preference, you can just dial this in as you see fit, but generally, I would say movement keys and uh, certain ability keys, you would want them to be set fairly quickly. And on that point, we can talk a little bit about the release threshold here. So again, it's a bit of the same, but slightly different. So let me explain. So point one again is the fastest and four millimeters is the slowest, but this just allows you to set a certain key. Let's take the C key, for example, here. If it's at 0.1 millimeters, that means when I press the key down, first of all, it's going to activate at 0.6, right? So you can see it's activating over here, and it only takes 0.1 millimeters of distance for me to lift my finger back up for the key to reset, and I can hit it again. So that's an advantage of, as you see in the industry, a rapid trigger. So I can activate the key very quickly and reactivate it very quickly. Now, traditional gaming keyboards, this is generally a set value around 2 millimeters, Maybe sometimes you can find it as low as one millimeter, but most commonly around two. And you know, with the ability to set this as low as 0.1, that's about a 10 to 20 times advantage in speed in terms of how quickly you can reactivate and activate your keys. So again, a huge advantage on a competitive front. That all being said, play around with your settings. There's no universal truth in terms of you know what's better or worse. It's going to depend on your individual play style and the type of games that you play. For me, this is a pretty good balance. I can go over my last one here. Uh, this preset is a 1.4 millimeter with a 0.5 release threshold. Uh, and again, here for my red keys, 4 millimeter, half. And then for my fastest keys, 0.6 millimeter and 0.1 millimeter. Uh, this just gives me a good balance of you know general typing experience when I'm not gaming my critical keys when I'm in movement, and then any keys that I don't want activated uh, can be at the slowest settings. Okay, so now moving on to the bindings tab here. Pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can uh, change your key bindings. Uh, for me, I didn't do too much here. I just set my play, pause, media key uh, to replace my page up. So that's my preference here. But again, you can swap things to your liking you know if i want to put the insert key over here it's just a drag and drop boom and it's replaced if you want to revert any keys just a simple right click and it goes back to its default setting now next up we have our macros tab again pretty self-explanatory if you're keen on using macros for work or for games uh, they can all be created in here with you know full functionality you'll just uh, click here to create a new one and then you can start assigning actions in here. Pretty simple interface. You can just drag and drop. Uh, you can record um, however you see fit and you can set up your cycles here and delete here and edit here. Again, just a quick and easy way to make an adjustment without having to redo the entire action. Once you're done setting up your macro, then you can just go here to assign it to a specific key. And we'll move on to the last tab here, which is your settings tab. Once everything has been dialed into your liking, you can save this as your current profile. If you want to reset any of the tabs to their default state, you can do so here, or you can do all of them at once. If I just want to um, do my key binds, I can just click that, reset, confirm. And if we go back to key bindings, as you see, my media key is now gone. And I can just put that back to how I like it. Go back here, save, and we're all set. And that concludes our brief overview of the Zenblade 65 keyboard web app. Again, if you see any issues or errors or maybe just things that you want changed or added, please leave this feedback on our Discord in the product feedback section. Again, my name was Lemonade. You can find me active in the Discord. If you have any questions, you can leave them there. You can also contact support at support at or please just leave a comment here on the YouTube video and we'll try to answer any questions or concerns anyone has. Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next Fresh Squeeze video.